who to us today. And I want to wish you a happy, healthy, and blessed Sabbath to everyone. Um, we hope everybody is doing his or her job and doing their part in uh, staying healthy and keeping those around you healthy uh, with this social distancing thing. And we also want to ask everyone to keep each other in prayer as well as our uh, leadership and elder brothers throughout the Israel of God. So to get to today's lesson, brothers and sisters, which is titled Man's Home Going. Today's lesson is titled Man's Home Going. You know, brothers and sisters, most of us have heard people say that when someone die, they go to heaven. He went to heaven. She went to heaven. We weren't taught this. It's just that we simply heard it hundreds and thousands of times. But hearing something thousands of times doesn't make it valid. Proving that it is true, that makes it valid. So we're going to start today's lesson in Philippians chapter 1. Because we want to start off with one of those places that people like to go to try to say that once a person die, they automatically going to go to heaven. And we're going to end today's lesson. By the time we end it, we will have answered these seven questions. Can you guys put the uh, seven questions up on the screen? We have seven questions up there. The seven questions are, uh, what is a soul? We're going to answer that question. Does anybody go to heaven? Where do sinners end up? Where do the righteous end up? Or just some of these seven questions, but you can see them on your screen there. And by the end of this lesson, we will have answered every one of those questions. So we're going to start today's lesson in Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1, and we're going to start at verse 21. Philippians 1 and 21, because this is one of those places that people go in the writings of the Apostle Paul, and they misunderstand them, totally misunderstand them. Philippians 1 and 21. Go ahead and read that, brother. For to me, uh -huh. to live is Christ, Yes. and to die is gain. Uh -huh. But if I live in the flesh... This is the fruit of my labor. Uh -huh. Yet what I shall choose, I would not. Okay, go ahead. For I am in a strait betwixt two, uh -huh. having a desire to depart and to be with Christ. He said he's in a strait betwixt, between the two, oh, he's, he's saying, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ. Now, somebody might take this and take off running with it, that immediately when I die, I'm going to end up being with Christ. Immediately. But go ahead and finish that, brother. Which is far better. Go ahead. Nevertheless, uh -huh. to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. So he said, but nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you because if I'm still here alive in the flesh, I can continue teaching you and helping you get that salvation. But what we have to prove is this one thing that when you die, you're not instantly with Christ, brothers and sisters. So let's go back to the beginning, brother. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis 2, and let's go to verse 7. Genesis 2 and 7. Because we have to answer these questions and clear this thing up. This is, we're going to show you what man's real home going is today. Because you'll hear people say, so-and-so and so-and-so and so had a home going. And they'll mm -hmm. say, that same person went to heaven. But let's see if that is the case. Genesis 2, my brother. Pick it up at verse 7. Verse 7. Go ahead and read it. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. So right here, right, right in the beginning, we see that man came from the dust of the ground. Go ahead and read. And breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. So the Lord put the breath of life into this man's nostrils. Go ahead and read. And man became a living soul. So man became a living soul. We didn't read in that verse that the Lord put a soul inside this man. We see that he put the breath of life into this man. So we have two components here. We have the, we have the man who 
came from the dust of the ground, and we have that breath of life that was put into that man to mobilize the man. That's all we see here. And then it said the man became a living soul. He is the soul, brothers and sisters. He was the soul. There was no soul installed or inserted inside this man. We cannot read that. But we're going to go keep going and prove it. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians 15, and we just want one verse, verse 45. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 45, Brother Todd. Go ahead and read it. And so it is written. Yes. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Now, and again, we have our second witness that the man was made mm -hmm. a living soul. There was no soul put inside this man. Brothers and sisters, go ahead and read. The last Adam. The last Adam, which is Jesus. Was made a quickening spirit. He was made a quickening spirit. Okay. So now, let's go into uh, Ezekiel 18. Because what we have to prove what a soul is. We're going to prove that to you today. What is a soul? Ezekiel chapter 18. And we're going to start at verse 20. Because if I stand on my car in front of your house for 730 something days, two years straight every day, and I say my name is George the Great, everybody, right. on your, everybody in your neighborhood is going to mm -hmm. say my name is George the Great. Because you heard it so many times. That don't mean it's true. Right. But people will mm -hmm. argue because they heard something so many times. But can you prove it? That's the question. We like proving things with the word of God, this Bible. Ezekiel 18 and 20. Go ahead and read that, brother. The soul that sinned. The soul that sinned. Go ahead. It shall die. The soul shall die. But they'll tell you when a person dies, the soul comes out of them and goes somewhere. But we read right here by Ezekiel that the soul that sent him, the soul died. I thought men and women sin. If a man sin and a woman sin, we see right here a soul sin. Go ahead and read, brother. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Uh huh. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. Go ahead. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. Uh huh. And the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Now skip down to verse 26 and continue. When a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness mm -hmm. and committeth iniquity. That means that, that man is going to commit a sin, right? right. Go mm -hmm. ahead and read. And dieth in them. And that man can die in them sins. Go ahead. For his iniquity uh -huh. that he have done uh -huh. shall he die. Wait a minute. We mm -hmm. see here that in one verse, Ezekiel say the soul that sinned, the soul going to die. In another verse, he say the man that sinned, he's mm -hmm. going to die. Seems like man and soul is the same thing. Right. The soul is the body, brothers and sisters, but we have one witness. Let's go get another one. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 5. Leviticus 5. We, that's one question that we have to prove. What is a soul? There's no soul sitting inside of you at the cockpit behind your forehead, looking through your eyes, telling you what to do. Leviticus chapter 5 verse 1 my brother let's pay attention to all these things that a soul is capable of doing and we're going to see clearly that it's the same thing that a man or a woman can do or a person's body can do and have. Go ahead and read, brother. And if a soul sin, go ahead and hear the voice of swear. Wait a minute. Can a man hear, brothers and sisters? Can a woman hear? It says right here, a soul can hear. Go ahead and read. And there's a witness. Uh huh. Whether he have seen or known of it. Wait a minute. Now the soul can see. A man can see. Go ahead and read. If he do not utter it, uh huh. Then he shall bear his iniquity. Go ahead. Or if a soul touch any unclean thing. So now a soul can touch something. Same thing men and women can do. Go ahead and read. Whether it be a carcass of an unclean beast. Uh -huh. Or a carcass of unclean cattle. Go ahead. Or the carcass of unclean creeping things. Mm -hmm. And if it be hidden from him. Yes. He also shall be unclean and guilty. And now a soul can be unclean and mm -hmm. guilty. Skip down my brother to verse 4 and continue. Or if a soul swears. So now a soul can swear. Go ahead. Pronouncing with his lips to do evil. Wait a minute. A soul got lips? Yes, sir. 
sound like a soul is mm -hmm. a person to me. He says, if a soul swear, pronouncing with his lips, go ahead and read. Or to do good. Uh-huh. Whatsoever it be that a man shall pronounce with Oh, an so a man pronounced with an oath, the soul swear and pronounce with his lips. We're saying, brothers and sisters, that a man and a soul is one and the same. Go ahead and read. And it be hid from him. Yes. When he knoweth of it, uh -huh. then he shall be guilty in one of these. Go ahead. And it shall be mm -hmm. when he shall be guilty in one of these things that he shall confess that he have sinned in that thing. So now we see once again that a soul can sin and he can confess that he sinned. Go ahead and read. And he shall bring his trespass offering uh -huh. unto the Lord for his sin, mm -hmm. which he has sinned. A female from the, from the flock, uh -huh. a lamb or a kid of the goats Go ahead. for a sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for him concerning his sin. So the priest can make an atonement for the soul. The soul can do an offering. The soul can uh, confess his sins. The soul can pronounce with his lips. He can swear. A soul can hear. A soul can see. That sounds like a human being to me, brothers and sisters. So as we read, Adam became a living soul. And as Paul told you in 1 Corinthians, he was made a living soul. Nobody can read where the soul got put into a person. So now, that question is answered. The soul is the body, brothers and sisters. It's the sum total of the person. So now, let's go into Job chapter 27. Job 27. And let's get start working on this other, this next question. What is it that comes out of you when you die? What is it that comes out of a person when they die? Job 27, my brother. And let's pick it up at verse 3. Job 27 and verse 3. Go ahead and read. All the while my breath is in me. He said, all the while that my breath is in me. Go ahead and read. And the spirit of God is in my nostrils. Oh, so Job say, that's the spirit of God that's in his nostrils. Mm -hmm. But at first he said, it's that breath. And we read in Genesis 2 and 7 that the breath of life is what the Lord put in the nostrils of a, of a man. And Job called that breath spirit. So now let's go to Psalm 146, brother. Psalm 146 and pick it up at that third verse. Psalm 146 and verse 3. He said the spirit is in his nostrils. And we see in another place that the breath was in his nostrils. Psalm 146, verse 3. Go ahead and read. Put not your trust in princes. No, go ahead. Nor in the son of man. Uh-huh. In whom there is no help. Go ahead. His breath goeth forth. He said, don't trust in man because that man's breath is going to go forth. Go ahead and read. He returned it to his earth. He's going to return where, brother? To his earth. He said, the man's going to return to the earth. Go ahead. In that very day, uh -huh. his thoughts perish. And in that very day, that dead man's thoughts are going to perish. He's not thinking anything else. But we see right here. That David say the man breath go forth away from him because a person that's dead, they have no breath of life in them. So now we see, let's go to first Kings chapter two and show you something because Job called it spirit in his nostrils. Mm -hmm. Moses called it breath in his nostrils. And right here, David called it breath, spirit, breath. You call it breath. I call it spirit. You say car. I say vehicle. You say sunglasses. I say shades. You say janitor. I say custodian. One and the same. Same thing, <laughs> brothers and sisters. Spirit, in this case, is the same thing as the breath of life. So that's what comes out of you when you die. His breath going forth. And then David wrote that the man returned to the earth. So we are starting already to work on answering another question. First Kings 2, my brother, we just want one verse. Verse 10, go ahead and read it. So David slept with his father uh -huh. and was buried in the city of David. Yes. So now we see that David got buried, right? Mm -hmm. Now the Lord said that David was a man out of his own heart. Right. And we only know that David only had that one issue with you ride a Hittite. So we know he was a righteous man. Let's see if David went to heaven or if he did what he wrote, which was went back to the earth. Let's go to Acts chapter 2. Let's see if David went back to the earth. 
Acts chapter 2, and let's pick it up at verse 29. 2 and 29. Most times, brothers and sisters, a lot of our teachings that we do here, of course we read them out of the Bible, but we have to put a lot of energy into correcting false teachings. A lot of energy has to be put into that because of because a lot of things get taught or said that's simply not true. It's not biblical. Acts 2 and 29. Go ahead and read, brother. Men and brethren, uh -huh. let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, uh -huh. that he is both dead and buried. See, we read in Kings mm. that he was buried. Go ahead. And his sepulcher is with us unto this day. And his grave is with us till this very day. Skip down and read verse 34. For David is not ascended into the heaven. Now the book clearly says David did not ascend into heaven. Go ahead and read. But he saith himself. Uh -huh. The Lord said unto my Lord. Uh -huh. Sit thou on my right hand. So he said but the Lord said unto my Lord. You sit at my right hand. We ain't heard the Lord tell right. nobody else. You come on up here to, on, into heaven and sit <laughs> next to me. Right. Did we hear yes. him? Can we read him say that about anybody else? I ain't read that. David said, the Lord said to my Lord, you come up here and sit on my right. We can't read mm. that about anyone else. So now, let's go back to Solomon, Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes 12, and let's pick it up at verse 5. So we see that David went to the grave. Ecclesiastes 12. And David wrote that your spirit go forth and you return to the dust. Ecclesiastes 12, let's start at verse 5, brother. 12 and 5. 12 and 5. Go ahead and read it. Also, when they shall be afraid of that which is high. Uh-huh. And the almond tree shall flourish. Wait a minute. Ecclesiastes 12 and 5. Ecclesiastes 12. Mm -hmm. 12 and 5. Okay, start that yeah. back at the top for me. Also, when they shall be afraid of that which is high, uh -huh. and fear shall be in the way, go ahead, and the almond tree shall flourish, uh -huh. and the grasshopper shall be a burden, mm -hmm. and desire shall fail, go ahead, because man goeth to his long home. He said, "Man's going to go to his long home." The question is, where is man's home? That's the question. Go ahead and read. And the mourners go about the streets. Go ahead. Or ever the silver cord be loose. Uh huh. Or the golden bowl be broken. Mm -hmm. Or the pitcher be broken at the fountain. Or the wheel broken at the cistern. Go ahead. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. It says, then shall the dust, which is man, return to the earth. Just like we read that Adam was made from the dust of the ground. Go ahead and read. And the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. See, God gave man this breath of life. And, and right here, we just read it as spirit. But you can read it as breath and you can read it as spirit. That's what's in you. That's what mobilizes, man. Because once breath goes from your body, you're dead. Dead men don't breathe, okay? And folks breathing are not dead. So now, we see it here, but the point we're making here also is that the dust return to the earth. Man go back to the earth when he die, brothers and sisters. But let's go into Luke chapter 8 and show you something. Luke chapter 8. Luke 8. And let's start at verse 49. Let's look at this little short story here. Luke chapter 8 and verse 49. Eight and forty-nine. Go ahead and read. While he yet spake, mm -hmm. there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, uh -huh. saying to him, "Thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the mass." Go ahead. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, mm -hmm. "Fear not. Believe only, mm -hmm. and she shall be made whole." So Jesus said, "Don't fear. The, the young sister is going to be made whole." Go ahead and read. And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter and James mm -hmm. and John. And the father and the mother of the maiden. So Jesus went to the house where the young lady was. She was dead now, but go ahead and read. And all wept and bewailed her. Mm -hmm. But he said, mm -hmm. weep not. She is not dead, but sleeping. So Jesus said, she's not dead. She's just sleeping. Go ahead. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. Go ahead. And he put them all out and took her by the hand and called, saying, maid, arise. Uh -huh. And her spirit came again. And she arose straightway. And he commanded to give her meat. But see, being that we've read 
in these other places when we read right here in verse 55 when it said her spirit came again and she arose straightway we know that we can also say her breath came again breath is spirit brothers and sisters that's what leaves you when you die and as long as you living that's what's in you breath that's what the lord put in adam and that's what's going in and out of your nostrils okay so now, let's go back to Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. See, sometimes you have to get witnesses to these things, and then you have to go one place and get some understanding. So when you go to this other place, when you read it, you'll see what's going on. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. But you always have to get your witness. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, Brother Todd, and let's pick it up at 19. 3 and 19. 3 and 19. Go ahead and read it. For that which befalleth the sons of men, uh -huh. befall it be. He said, everything that happened to man, it happened to the animals as well. Go ahead and read. Even one thing befalleth them. Uh -huh. As the one dieth, uh -huh. so dieth the other. So man die and the beast die. Go ahead. Yeah, they have all one breath. They got one breath. You breathe the same breath that the elephant mm -hmm. is breathing. The same stuff that the dog and the rat it's the same. Go ahead and read. So that a man have no preeminence above a beast. He says, so man have no preeminence over the animals. Go ahead and read. For all is vanity. Go ahead. All go unto one place. He says, all of them go to one place. Go ahead. All are of the dust. All are dust. All animals and all human beings are made from the dust of the earth, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. And all turn to dust again. And they all turn to the dust again. But then, have you ever gone to the funeral of a mouse and somebody say that mouse went to heaven no. or that hamster went to heaven? No. They just bury it. And that's it. So, if man have no preeminence over the beast and, they re and man return to the dust and animals return to the dust and we can read it in the book, then that's what it is. We haven't seen anybody mm -hmm. go to heaven. Nope. We're supposed to be witness of things that we can see. So now, let's stay in Ecclesiastes and go to the ninth chapter. Ecclesiastes 9, let's pick it up at verse 3. 9 and 3. Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 3. It says, man return to the dust and the beast return to the dust. So that's where the dead people go. Even if they burn them and cre cremate them, they're still dust. Even if they die in the ocean and stay mm -hmm. down there, eventually they turn to the dust in that water. Ecclesiastes, my brother, 9 and 3. Go ahead and read it. This is an evil among all things yes. that are done under the sun. Mm -hmm. That there is one event unto all. Yes. Yeah. Also the heart of the sons of men. It's full of evil. Mm -hmm. And madness is in their heart while they live. Yes. And after that, they go to the dead. After that, they go to the dead. Go ahead and read. For to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. He said, if you are joined to the living sisters and brothers, you have some hope. Go ahead, brother. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. He says a living dog is better than a dead lion, even though the lion is the king of the jungle. Yeah. But if he's dead, what good is he? Hmm. Let's find out why the living dog is better, brother. Go ahead and read. For the living know that they shall die. For the living know that they shall die. Go ahead. But the dead know not anything. But the dead don't know anything. Go ahead. Neither have they any more reward. For the memory of them is forgotten. The dead don't have a memory. They in a deep sleep, in a long-term sleep, brothers and sisters. They know nothing. So if you're going out to the graveyard and you're talking to somebody that's dead, then you just talking to the grass and the flowers and the trees out there. Because a dead person cannot hear you. Go ahead and read, brother. Also, their love. Their love. And their hatred. Uh -huh. And their envy. Go ahead. It's now perished. Mm -hmm. Neither have they any more portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. A dead flesh and, a flesh and blood person have no more portion in anything that's done under the sun. Once they die, that is it until the Lord wake them up. Okay? So now, skip down to verse 10, brother, and read that. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, mm -hmm. do it with thy might. Go ahead. But there's no work, mm -hmm. nor device. Says there's no work, 
nor device, go ahead, nor knowledge, nor knowledge, nor wisdom, uh -huh. in the grave, where, in the grave, uh -huh. whither thou goest, because that's where everybody go when you die, you go to the grave, you don't go to heaven, we've been reading all over this book this morning, by all these different witnesses, that you return to the dust, you go to the grave, so now, Let's go and let Jesus tell you something. Because let's go to John 3. Because we like to put him on the witness stand. Because uh, a lot of people, they still get so wrapped up in what they've heard, they'll even dismiss what Jesus said. Shame on them. But let's see what he said right here. John 3 and verse 13, my brother. 13. Go ahead and read it. And no man have ascended up to heaven. He said, no man, brothers and sisters, have ascended up to heaven. Go ahead and read. But he that came down from heaven. Except the one that came from there, which is himself. We didn't come from there. We come from the dust of this earth. Go ahead and read. Even the son of man, which is in heaven. So now, skip back up, brother Todd, to verse uh, 11 and read that for us. Go ahead. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, mm -hmm. we speak that we do know. He said, we speak that we do know. Go ahead. And testify that we have seen. And we testify that which we have seen. Now, we go to these funerals mm -hmm. and we go out to the graveyards. We watch them put our loved ones in the ground. Why can't we just testify yeah. to that? My cousin is in the grave. My aunt's in the grave. My uncle's in the grave. Why do I have to tell somebody something that I haven't seen? Why should I say out of my mouth that such and such went to heaven when I didn't see them go there? Hmm. But I went out to the graveyard and I witnessed them get lowered into that ground. Why can't I testify to that which I have witnessed? Go ahead and read. And you receive not our witness. You don't even receive our witness just like. I'm telling you they're in the grave. I saw them going to the grave. You saw them going to the grave, but you say they went to heaven. That doesn't make sense. But go ahead and read, brother. If I have told you earthly things and you believe not. And this is earthly stuff that we're talking about here. You saw your loved one go in the grave. You saw that. And you don't even believe what you saw. You don't even believe the earthly stuff that you saw with your own two eyes. Go ahead and read. How shall you believe uh -huh. if I tell you of heavenly things? So Jesus said, how, how are you going to believe some heavenly things I'm going to try to tell you? You don't even believe the earthly stuff that you see with your own eyes. That's hard. So now, let's go to Isaiah chapter 26 because we have another witness. I mean, you can go to Acts chapter 1 and see where some, some people standing there saw Jesus ascend up into heaven. And the angel told them he's going to descend right back here in like manner, just like you saw him go up there. So we, you can see him going up. And so they witnessed to that. They saw him go there. But we haven't seen anybody else go up to heaven to be with the Father. So why do we say that? The things that we can't see. Isaiah 26, my brother. And let's start at verse 19. Isaiah 26 and verse 19. Go ahead and read it. Thy dead men shall live. Mm -hmm. Together with my dead body shall they arise. Now listen to what Isaiah is saying. He's saying the dead men shall live. And he said together with his dead body they shall rise. Because everybody is going to rise at the same time. You're going to have a first resurrection and a second resurrection. He's referring to the first one right here. All these dead righteous people, they're going to come up together at the same time when Jesus comes back. Not a moment before that. Go ahead and read. Let's see what they're doing in the meantime. Go ahead and read. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in dust. Where are they dwelling, brother? In dust. He said, awake and sing, ye that dwell in the dust. Go ahead and read. For thy dew is as the dew of earth. Uh-huh. And the earth shall cast out the dead. And the earth going to cast out her dead. Go ahead and read. Come, my people. Come, my people. Enter thou into thy chambers. He said, enter into your chambers, which is the grave. Go ahead. And shut thy doors about thee. Uh-huh. Hide thyself. As it were for a little moment. He said, hide thyself as if it were for a little moment. Because when the righteous dead get awakened by Christ, it's going to seem like they just took a little nap. They're going to wake up and things going to look different, but it's just going to feel like they were sleeping for a short while. This is what we reading right here by Isaiah. He said, hide thyself 
as if were for a little moment. Go ahead and read. Until the indignation be overpassed. Until the indignation be overpassed. Right. Indignation. We talking Jesus here, brothers and sisters. Yes, he's going to have some indignation. Go ahead and read, brother. For behold, for behold, the Lord coming out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. He said the Lord is coming to punish the people, to punish the people for their sins. Go ahead and read. The earth also shall disclose her blood uh -huh. and shall no more cover her slain. Okay, so now let's go into Job and see how Job is talking. Let's see if he can match what Isaiah is saying. Because Isaiah is saying that the dead is going to. The righteous dead here, they're going to ar arise up together. But he said in the meantime, they're going to dwell in the dust and they're going to hide themselves in these chambers as if it were for a little moment until the wrath of the Lord is done and complete. Because he's going to come back and clean this earth up because he has to live on it and he's not going to live on it with all the abominations that's going on. He's got to clean it up in order to dwell here. So now, Job 12, I mean 14, I'm sorry, and we're going to start at verse 12. Now, you can go in the first chapter of Job, brothers and sisters, and you can read that Job was a perfect and upright man. So now, let's look at this conversation of a perfect and upright man and see if he's talking about going to heaven. Job 14 and 12, brother. Go ahead and read. So man lie it down uh -huh. and rise it not. Till the heavens be no more. Uh -huh. They shall not awake. Uh -huh. Nor be raised out of their sleep. It's just like when Jesus said the young lady. said she's not dead. She's sleeping. Job called death sleep. He said man shall lie down. And they won't rise up. Until the heavens be no more. And they won't be raised out of their sleep. Go ahead and read. Oh that thou wouldest hide me in the grave. Now this perfect and upright man is saying. He wants to be hidden in the grave. He ain't saying nothing about going to heaven. Go ahead and read. That thou wouldest keep me secret. And keep him secret. Until thy wrath be passed. And that's that indignation Isaiah was talking about. Go ahead and read. That thou wouldest appoint me a set time. He said appoint me a set time. Not rapture me off to heaven as soon as I'm dying. Go ahead and read. And remember me. He says, appoint me a set time and remember me. Go ahead and read. If a man dies. Shall he live again? And that's the question. If a man dies, is he going to live again? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. All the days of my appointed time will I wait. Will I do what? Will I wait? He said, I'm going to wait. Go ahead. Till my change come. Till my change come. Because Job know in order to reside with the Lord and get into his kingdom, you can't get in there with this flesh and blood body. You have to have a glorified body like the Lord's body, a spiritual body, if you will. But we're going to read some of that a little bit later. But go ahead and read. Thou shall call. So Job is saying the Lord is going to call. Go ahead. And I will answer thee. And he's going to answer the Lord. Go ahead. Thou will have a desire to work to the work of thine hand. Uh-huh. For now thou numberest my steps. You know what? That's good, my brother. Excuse me. Can the uh, audio video brothers put up that second picture, please? Because uh, so far in this lesson, we have answered four of these questions. Okay, so the one question is, what is a soul? And we answered that question with scripture. The soul is the body. And then we had the question, what leaves your body when you die? The breath, the breath of life leaves your body, brothers and sisters. The next question was, does the righteous dead go to heaven? And the answer is no. We see Isaiah talking about dwelling in dust. We see Job talking about hide me in the grave. We see that David died. And we read in the book of Acts that it said his sepulcher is still with us to this very day. So the righteous does not go to heaven. And then the next question was, where do you go when you die? According to what we've been reading from all of these writers, you go back to the dust. You go to the dirt. You return to the earth. Okay, so now you can take that picture back down, brother, please. Thank you. So now let's go into John 5 and pick it up at verse 28. Because Job said that the Lord is going to call and he's going to answer the Lord. He says, you're going to call and I'm going to answer. So now let's let Jesus tell you about that. John chapter 5, my brother, let's pick it up at verse 28. 
5 and 28. John 5 and 28. Let's let Jesus tell you. Go ahead and read it. Marvel not at this. Uh -huh. For the hour is coming. Uh -huh. In the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. Who's in the grave? All, all of them is in the grave. It's going to hear the voice of the Lord. Just like what uh, Job was saying. You're going to call and I'm going to answer. Go ahead and read. And shall come forth. And they're going to come forth. They that have done good. The ones that have done good. Unto the resurrection of life. They're going to come forth out that grave to everlasting life, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. And they that have done evil. And the ones that have done the sinful things against the word of the Lord. Go ahead. Unto the resurrection of damnation. Unto the resurrection of damnation. So if we got the ones that's going to get eternal life coming out the grave. And we got the ones that the Lord going to put into that fire coming out the grave. Then clearly everybody that's ever died, they have returned to the dust, brothers and sisters. They did not go to heaven. Okay? So now, let's press on. Let's go into uh, John chapter 11. Let's stay in John and go to chapter 11. And we're going to get this example here. Here's an example of what Jesus was talking about in the fifth chapter. And he did this just so he could show this example. John chapter 11, my brother, let's pick it up at the first verse. John 11 and verse 1. Go ahead and read it. Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus uh -huh. of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. Okay, so, so Lazarus, the brother of of Mary and Martha was sick. So now, well, go ahead and read that verse too. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment uh -huh. and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Go ahead. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, mm -hmm. Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. Uh -huh. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, yes. but for the glory of God, mm -hmm. that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. He said, this sickness is not unto death, but to the glory of God, okay? So now, skip down. See, we see here that Jesus got a reason for not going right away. Skip down to verse 11, my brother, and go ahead and read. These things said he, mm -hmm. and after that he saith unto them, mm -hmm. Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, yes. but I go, that I may awake him out of sleep. So Jesus said, Our friend Lazarus is sleeping. I'm going to go ahead and go over there so I can wake him out of that sleep. Go ahead and read. Then said his disciples, uh -huh. Lord, if he sleep, mm -hmm. he shall do well. Go ahead. How be it Jesus spake of his death, mm -hmm. but they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest in sleep. So his disciples thought he was talking about taking a nap type of sleep. But Jesus wasn't talking about that. But go ahead and read. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, mm -hmm. Lazarus is dead. So he told them plain, Lazarus is dead. So now let's skip on down to verse 23 and continue. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. But see, Jesus wasn't talking about that. But we see right here that this sister even has some knowledge and some understanding that the Lord's going to have resurrection and people are going to get raised up out the grave. But he wasn't talking about that. Go ahead and read, brother. Jesus said unto her, mm -hmm. I am the resurrection. He said, I'm the resurrection. Go ahead. And the life. Yes, sir. He that believeth in me, mm -hmm. though he were dead, mm -hmm. yet shall he live. He's talking about raising folks up from the grave. Go ahead and read. And whosoever liveth mm -hmm. and believeth in me shall never die. Mm -hmm. Believest thou this? So when he said you shall never die, he's speaking of that second death lake of fire. That's what he's mm -hmm. talking about if you believe on him. So he said, believest thou this? So skip down, my brother, to verse 32 and continue. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was mm -hmm. and saw him, Go ahead. she fell down at his feet, mm -hmm. saying unto him, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. Go ahead. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping which came with her, mm -hmm. he groaned in the spirit and was troubled, mm -hmm. and said, 
Where have you laid him? Mm -hmm. They said unto him, Lord, come and see. So, okay, so now they got all the emotion out of the way. And Jesus said, okay, where have you laid him? And so they took him to the sepulcher, to the grave. Skip down to verse 38, my brother, and continue. Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in himself, coming to the grave. Uh -huh. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. Uh -huh. Jesus said, take ye away the stone. Mm -hmm. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, stinketh, for he have been dead four days. See, first of all, Lazarus was a guy that Jesus loved. Mm -hmm. And the books say, if you keep the commandments, those are the ones that the Lord loved. Right. So, being that he was dead, according to the teachings of the mm -hmm. world, Lazarus should have been in heaven. Huh? Mm -hmm. Some part of them should have been there. But the whole sum total of this brother was in that grave. And his sister said that he should be stinking by now. But go ahead and continue, brother. Jesus said unto her, mm -hmm. said I not unto thee, mm -hmm. that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Go ahead. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. Uh -huh. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee. That thou has heard me. Go ahead. And I knew that thou hearest me always. Mm -hmm. But because of the people which stand by, I said it. Mm -hmm. That they may believe that thou hast sent me. He said, so that they can believe that he was sent by the Father. Go ahead and read. And when he thus had spoken, mm -hmm. he cried with a loud voice. He cried with a loud voice. Lazarus, come forth. And this is the same thing Jesus just told us. In John chapter 5, verse 28 and 29, he said, all that in the grave is going to hear his voice, and they are going to come forth. And he's going to call you just like that. And right here, he's showing you the example. He said, Lazarus, come forth. Go ahead and read. And he that was dead came forth, uh -huh. bound hand and foot with grave clothes. Go ahead. And his face was bound about with a napkin. Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto them, loose him and let him go. So right then, he showed you the example of what he was talking about back in the fifth chapter. He has the power. He said, I'm the life and I'm the resurrection. He's going to call people out the grave just like he did right here. We just saw that. So now, he's not going to grab them from heaven, and we can't read that anywhere. So now, let's go back to uh, 1 Corinthians 15, and let's pick it up at verse 22. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 22. 1 Corinthians 15 and 22. And we should be witnesses of things we can see. Instead of what we heard Just because they say it a thousand times does not make it accurate and right. 1 Corinthians 15, my brother. Let's pick it up at verse 22. Verse 22. Go ahead and read it. For as in Adam all die, mm -hmm. even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Go ahead. But every man in his own order. Uh -huh. Christ, the first fruit. He said Christ is the first fruits, okay, of them that died. Go ahead. Afterward, they that are, are afterward, they that are Christ. He said afterwards. They that belong to Christ. When? At his coming. At his coming. And not a moment before that, brothers and sisters. So now, let's go into Revelation chapter 20. Revelation 20. I mean, all over the Bible it said, at his coming, at his appearing. When he comes, thy kingdom come. I come again. When you come in your kingdom. All over the book it's saying, come, come, come. But everybody's talking about going somewhere. Revelation chapter 20. Let's pick it up at verse 4. 20 and verse 4. So people run into something that Paul wrote and they get it twisted up. But we're going to get to even uh, some more of that later in this lesson. Revelation chapter 20, my brother. Let's pick it up at verse 4. 20 and 4. Because it says those that belong to Christ at his coming. That's the first resurrection. Let's see if we can see it right here. Go ahead and read. And I saw thrones, mm -hmm. and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. Uh -huh. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus yes. and for the word of God. He said, and I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto these people that were sitting on these thrones because they were judges as well. 
They made that first resurrection. Go ahead and read. And which had not worshipped the beast. Because they didn't worship the beast, go ahead. Neither his image. Uh -huh. Neither had received his mark upon their foreheads mm -hmm. or in their hands. Go ahead. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. He said, and these people lived and they reigned with Christ for one thousand years. Go ahead and read. But the rest of the dead. But the rest of the dead. Lived not again mm -hmm. until the thousand years were finished. Yes. This is the first resurrection. So if you make that first cut, brothers and sisters, you will be living and reigning with Christ for one thousand years in his kingdom on this earth. But the rest of the dead, they have to stand in judgment if they didn't die in Christ. And then that's when your work gets set before the Lord and a decision has to be made on you. So now, go ahead and continue, brother. Blessed and holy is he mm -hmm. that have part in the first resurrection. He said the person that have part in his first resurrection, he's blessed and holy. Go ahead and read. On such, on the, such the second death have no power. There's no chance of you going in the lake of fire if you make that first resurrection. So that's what we all should be laboring for and shooting for. But go ahead and read, brother. But they shall be priests of God uh -huh. and of Christ. And shall reign with him a thousand years. He said they're going to reign with the Lord a thousand years.